let's take a look at properties of addition and multiplication. Which property of addition is shown? 1 plus 0 equals 1. All right, and our answer choices are either associative, commutative, or identity. All right, so let's take a look at these three properties, first of all. Remember, when you have addition or multiplication, the order does not matter, right? If I said 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2, I still get the same answer. Same with multiplication. 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, I get the same answer. So that would be the commutative property if you see that they're just changing the order to, and that the, your answer stays the same. Associative property is similar because it's based on the same idea that order doesn't matter when you add or multiply. But for associative, they change the order by moving the parentheses or the grouping symbols instead of actually changing the order of the numbers. Now the identity property is related to an operation that does not change the answer. Okay, so when you're adding, the only number you can add that doesn't change your answer is zero. So here, for example, we have one plus zero equals one. So they're illustrating that when I add zero to this number, it doesn't change my answer at all, I still get one. So that would be an example of the identity property. Okay, which property of addition is shown? One plus the quantity four plus three is equal to the quantity one plus four plus three. So notice what they're doing here is they're moving the grouping symbols, which shows us to add in another order, right? When they group four plus three, they're telling us to add four plus three first and then add one. Well, four plus three is seven, plus the one would give us eight. On the other side, they're saying add one plus four first and then add the three. Okay, well, one plus four is five, plus three still gives us eight. So this example is showing us that when you move the parentheses to change the order, we still get the same answer because we can add in any order. Well, remember we said a few moments ago that that's associative property. When you see the grouping symbols are moving, telling us to add or multiply in a different order, that would be our associative property. In this case, since we have addition, it would be the associative property of addition. 5 plus the quantity 1 plus 4 is equal to the quantity 5 plus 1 plus 4. Okay, so this is the same one we saw just a moment ago. It's showing us that we can change the order by changing the grouping symbols, and we're still going to get the same answer, right? 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 5 gives us 10. Here, if we add 5 plus 1 first to get 6, and then add the 4, we still get 10. So again, that's the associative property of addition, because it's showing us we can change the order we're adding in by moving the grouping symbols, and it does not change the answer. Which property of addition is shown? 5 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 5. Okay, now this one has the exact same idea that we can add in any order, right? If I say 5 plus 1, I get 6. If I say 1 plus 5, same thing, I get six. But notice, instead of moving grouping symbols, they actually changed the order of those numbers. So that would be commutative property. Now, a way to remember this is that commute actually means to move. If I commute to work, I have to move from my house to work. So maybe I'm driving or walking, but I'm still moving from one place to another. The same for you. If you say, I have to commute to school, well, maybe you take the bus or ride your bike, but you still have to move from one place to another, from home to school. So since commute means to move, commutative property is when they move the numbers or change the order. Okay, which property of multiplication is shown? One times two is equal to two times one. Well, notice they change the order, right? One times two or two times one, either way we get the same answer of two. When you change the order, it's commutative property, in this case, of multiplication. Four times five is equal to five times four. 
right? It doesn't matter if you change the order when you multiply, whether you say four times five or five times four, you're still gonna get 20. Well, when you change the order, that is commutative property. Four times three minus four times two is equal to four times the quantity three minus two. Okay, let's take a look at this property. When you see this, when you have a number multiplied by something in parentheses, that means we can multiply the number in front by both of the terms inside the parentheses. So we would say four times three, our sign is minus, so minus four times two. Okay, and we call that the distributive property because when you multiply this four by both of those numbers, we could say we're gonna distribute the four, right? Four times three and four times negative two. So when we say distribute the four, we just mean that we're gonna make sure to multiply it by both terms. So this is an example of the distributive property. One plus zero equals one. What property of addition is shown? Okay, well this is showing us that when we add zero, we don't change the value. So that is the identity property of zero. Or of addition. Which property of multiplication is shown? One times the quantity three plus five equals one times three plus one times five. Well, remember we said a few moments ago, when you have a number multiplied by something in parentheses, you can distribute or multiply that number to both terms inside. So we would distribute the one and say one times three. This time our symbol is a plus, so plus one times five. Okay, so that is the distributive property. Okay, and we have the same thing one more time. Remember, we would distribute the five to both of these to say five times three plus five times four. So again, another example of distributive property.